What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be taking a real quick look at a game that has graced our screen before called Black Skylands. Black Skylands is one of those games that I think in Sorcerer's people, it grabs them. When they see the action, when they see the pixel art, when they see the explosions and whatnot, it makes people wanna play it. And I think it's well worth the venture. So what is Black Skylands and why have I covered it so many times? Why am I covering it again? Well, Black Skylands is now out in 1.0. So this game has always been in early access every single other time that we covered it so it's always been kind of like a tbd where the content is going and what the final changes are going to look like but i'm happy to report that that time is now and black skylands is an open world sort of sky pirate sandbox where you fly around in like these airships that are propelled by various means i don't know if it counts as, i don't know what kind of punk this is all right it's some kind of like sky punk where everything's got sails on it and everything has turbines on it and everything kind of has like I guess dirigible balloons. Uh, it's very, very hard to describe the theme, but it's something that's like steampunk in the sky adjacent, I suppose. And it's a game where you will fly around with a giant mothership, which you will use as a home base. That mothership will allow you to rest, re-equip, resupply, store all your ships, uh, upgrade equipment, change things around, reinforce the hull, customize a little bit before you go back on out into the greater wide world to fight against a band of pirates and also a creepy sort of tyrannid threat that are attempting to consume the world as far as I can tell in this game universe everybody just lives in the sky the earth is gone they don't really say what happens if you jump off the side of your ship and fly forever but that leaves me curious but I suppose we'll leave more time to postulate that later for right now if you wanted to check out Black Skylands now would be the time to do it if it's already inside of your inventory I'm guessing a lot of people don't realize that it's out because I've gotten a bunch of achievements during the four hours I spent prepping for this video and every single one of them has like 0.1% next to it of the people that own the game have gotten it so this is just a reminder that the game exists and if you've been waiting for it to be complete but you already supported the developers now is the time the link is down below in the description you can check the game out there on top of that if you find that you wanted to see more of this game i will be streaming it on this save on the day that this video goes live so go ahead and give me a follow over there on twitch i'll do my best to put up two or three more hours on the board so you can decide whether or not this is the kind of game that you wanted to add to your wish list buy or pass on so now that I've showed you a few of the thrilling things you can do in the background while I was talking about the beginning of the game, what am I up to right now? Well, I'm really just kind of stacking upgrades at the moment, trying to get my gear and equipment to the point where I can take on bigger, nastier challenges. However, we do have an island directly north of us that I think it might not be the worst idea to wipe out. And given the fact the point of this game is effectively liberating all these islands out here, uh, I think we should probably get after that. The game has a tendency to offer you storyline quests every X number of, like, objectives that you knock over. And I think this might actually be... It's pointing it out to me as though it's a quest, so this might be one of our guys. This right here that you're seeing is a slipstream. Allows you to travel a little bit faster. My recommendation would be don't hit any of those flying sky mines that I'm shooting down as we're approaching the location going on over here so why is it me who's stuck here why not ronnie or johnny yeah why not ronnie or johnny they robbed the islands and split the loot and what about me nothing again it's because you got a dumbass hat dude that's what happens they sense your terrible cabeza accessory and once once they lock that in you ain't getting no loot go to guard them there in the cages can't even boot somebody's face in can't be spoiling the wares A moth? Did it fly away from the village or something? And Kane ordered all postal moths to be killed. I'm gonna... Oh, what was that? Nah, to the whale gullet with the moths. I got these sturdy gates here. It's much better to guard the wares behind them. Maybe I'm seeing things. I should check my ammo just in case. Yeah, that was a pretty big critter right there. It's one of those things that I don't think you want to have to dig up out of your fender if you run over it. So uh, the things we're picking up while we're flying around, you may notice we pick up kind of like crystal looking things a lot of the time. What I'm picking up is various types of steel. Uh, so in this game, your character, oh my god, I can't see my ammo counter right now. I've got a cup on my desk that's in front of it and I need to move that cup so that I can see. There we go. The cup has been moved. 
I've got a very small desk, dude, at my, like, house that I live in right now. Back in the day when I was, like, a Let's Player, long, long time ago in the before times, I had, like, this enormous desk that took up the entire wall and also turned the corner, so I was never hurting for space while I was trying to get my works done. However, nowadays I've got a very, very little tiny desk because it had to fit inside of, like, a space. And so, unfortunately, there's always things sitting around that are blocking my UI implements while I'm trying to do an episode. Uh, so you're going to see the little steel things flying all over the place, both red and blue. Those red and blue pips right there, they allow you to craft upgrades for your guns. The upgrade paths are very, very linear. I can show them to you right now, in fact. Let's go to the inventory, and you just press V while you're on any gun. And depending on how much you have a central village, like you have like a mothership that you go back to in order to drop off your loot and to store things and to like craft and do your upgrades and stuff like that. It's very linear. As you upgrade your armory, you can upgrade your guns further and further and further using the red steel. And then you do the exact same thing with blue steel, but for your ship weapons and your ship cannons and stuff like that. The upgrade paths are very, very linear. I would not expect anything crazy out of the upgrade paths. It seems like most of the interesting things that can happen in this game, hopping on account of your character's amulets uh, seem to be a big source of like the interesting abilities you have so as an example if i perfect reload you can take a look right there and if i perfect reload first of all the perfect reload quick time event is an amulet that i'm wearing and also i've got another amulet that makes it so that when i get a perfect quick time event i throw a grenade that deals like a ton of damage and so most of the interesting things your character is going to be doing are largely drawn uh, from your amulets, from what I've seen so far. Your character does have a melee attack. It's on your F key. You also have special abilities that you're going to be unlocking as you get further on into the game and doing research. I've got two of them right now. I've got myself a flame turret that you no doubt saw me deploy in one of those bigger ship battles. And then on top of that, I also have a shield that I can put down. Did that pterodactyl just blow up an innocent civilian? Okay, not an innocent. Did that pterodactyl just blow up a villainous pirate? I'm just going to kind of like reload real quick and you guys can do your thing and you can also suck that grenade right there. Ammo's a little bit of a problem in this game, so all of your guns have ammo and it's very clear that the game wants you to swap guns frequently uh, while you're playing the game. The indicators of this are that you only really get ammo back from enemies if you melee them when their health is low. You get ammo back, kind of like Doom style. And then on top of that, different enemies will have different resistances. And so you see this little symbol right here next to the ammo type and how it changes. The enemy will have that symbol next to their health bar if that's the type of ammo that knocks them down and takes them out for a loop. Those two things in combination have kind of taught me that the game wants me swapping at least between two or three weapons at any given time. We also have health kits that we can deploy at any time that we want to. I've only got one of them right now. I don't know how I unlock more slots to get more of them, but hopefully I'll get those pretty soon because having more med kits would be great. Lots of blue steel right there. Very nice. We should be able to do some serious upgrades. You don't need to go back to the central town in order to get your upgrades done. I'm actually going to heal right here. And then I'm going to use this plant to refill my med kits. There we go. Because I was missing like 8% health. It's not much, but it is something. We'll kind of like spray and pray these dudes down and then maybe feed that one in the back a grenade. Smack that dude for ammo right there, but he did get a hit off. There are lots of destructibles in this game. All of the sound effects are very well appointed. Uh, the pixel art is basically peerless. The thing about this game is it stays very, very closely and safely to the Ubisoft formula for the preparation of this video. I think I played for about four hours prior to all this. I think I can make that right there, I was gonna say. I can do I can do some cool hookshot action right there and possibly make that. There's lots of secret areas in this game. You should definitely be looking around for them. Uh, they'll have things like permanent life increases inside of them. They'll have things like gun mods that make your guns just flatly better in certain ways. They may have missing enemies as well. Uh, that you may end up looking for. Right here, this one had a watchtower. So if I go in here and I press the E key, it'll give me an aerial bird's eye view of the entire battle zone so that I can figure out exactly where it is that I want to go and where secrets might be hidden at. I think I can jump over to here. I can jump over to there too. I don't know. I can grab onto that one right there. So that was good to know as well. It actually looks like I was able to transition in between these two areas very easily. 
And we got some ammo over there. But as I was saying, sorry, I moved in between topics, unfortunately, without finishing my thought. My thought is that after four hours, this game stays very safely inside the Ubisoft formula. If you've ever played something like Assassin's Creed 2, or you've ever played something like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, this game is not far off the mark. Now that may sound like an insult with the way that Ubisoft is kind of viewed nowadays for making climb a tower simulators, but I in fact believe that Assassin's Creed Black Flag was the best game they ever made. Of all the Assassin's Creed's, that's where they hit the nail on the head and they did a perfect job making a super satisfying game from the beginning to the end. I can almost make that argument for Assassin's Creed Odyssey too, except that Assassin's Creed Odyssey really, really dragged after like the first X amount of hours. Uh, but this game sticks to kind of like that black flag formula. You go out, you liberate these little countries, these little islands, as you liberate them, uh, you will get new upgrades, your character will level up and get more health and stuff like that. You will become ready to take on new challenges and conquer new islands, and then the cycle kind of like repeats with some bosses and stuff put on in there. It hasn't gotten too wild and crazy from what I've seen, but my favorite set pieces in the four hours that I played have universally been the big ship fights and the big monster fights, both of which you saw in the intro to this game, pulling up on like an enemy frigate or pulling up on like a giant octopus monster and beefing it out in space, by far where I think this game shines the most. Then Crash sunk his fangs into him, sucked out his bone marrow with his teeth. No way, dude, how did teeth suck out bone marrow? You wanna go ask Crash what the teeth can or can't do? Nah, man. All right, let's go ahead and carry this thing on in here. Ooh, I want to go. I want that. That right there's a mod box. Uh, so you have a limited amount of inventory space in this game. You can have your moth come and get it and just take it back to your ship for you. There is also kind of like a weird stealth system in this game, by the way. I don't know how I get over there, actually. There's definitely like a guy right there, but I don't know how to get after him, and I don't want to get shot right here. There's also like a missive. This game does have a lot of lore. There are a lot of things for you to read to get into the game world. I have been mostly just enjoying the sandbox and I haven't been reading too heavily. That's fine, everybody plays games differently. I'm the kind of person that skips every single dialogue in every single game because like, when you play games for a living, you start to notice like the hero's journey just gets stuffed into like a bunch of tropes. And so I guess I started tuning out for most storylines because of it probably about, I don't know, three or four years ago. It's been a little bit since I paid attention to a storyline in a video game. So we need to get to a switch that's over here. Hey, stop it. Stop that right now. Uh, it looks like the switch is up this way. Oh, I could have assassinated that guy. This game does have a stealth system. Uh, you can melee guys from behind and they take like a ridiculous quadruple amount of damage. It usually like one shots and kills them. There we go, take him down. Hopefully get some ammunition. We've also got a couple things over here it wants me to look at. The game basically does a really good job highlighting objectives on the world map. Like where all the health upgrades are, where all of the weapon upgrades are, where all of the technology upgrades are. They should not be too difficult for you to find. Some of these islands will have puzzles on them. Uh, There's usually like Zelda style puzzles. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but you will have to use your brain for a couple of them. I had to look at for a second and be like, huh. What does this say? I was last to put a lock on the crystals, but what combo should I use? Maybe I should count the neighbors. There are twice as many people living on the second island as there are on the first island. The same number of people live on the first island and the third island. There are two people living on the third island. Mm, I think it should be 242 then. I had to put, I have a napkin on my desk and so I had to like sketch it out real fast. But yeah, it should be 242. Honestly, that's just like an exercise in tracking information. It's not even like a puzzle. It's just like, can you keep track of that in your head or do you have to take out a piece of paper? I took out a piece of paper and just scribbled real fast. And I'm like, 242, I guess? I don't know. It's one of those little brain teasers. Let's keep on going north, although our inventory is kind of full. Uh, this game does have an extensive fast travel system. So if you need to go back to base, it's usually not that big of a deal. Lots of little bullet hell sections like this as well throughout the game that you're going to run into on top of the puzzles and whatnot. I forget what this does. Does it heal me? Increases your damage to falcons for a minute and a half. Uh, there's herbs around that you can obviously pick up that will give you buffs. You just saw me do it right there. Let's see. Oh, cool. Health upgrade. There we go. Eat me. That's the rudest health upgrade I've ever seen in a video game. 
Looks like the oh, there's so many. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Calm down. This is not that important. Oh, I missed my reload too. He's got a shield. Oh, he got stunned. Nice. Get him from behind right there and then steal all of his red steel. Uh, we can use that right there. That has now opened the gate. And I think this is probably a pretty solid time to go back. Oh, we got a rifle. Nice. New gun. Cool. Uh, as of right now, I think after four hours, I've unlocked five different guns. Six. So I have a pistol, an SMG, an assault rifle, a shotgun, a sniper rifle, and like a lever action that we just picked up. As far as skyship weapons go, I haven't really gotten that far. We also have other upgrades over here that I haven't played around with like at all. I would probably say let's just do all in durability because I don't like fixing my ship. And then I would say let's go fuel capacity too. Although hold slot sounds pretty sexy as well. Not a bad little batch of upgrades. There is no visual difference from what I've seen so far when you upgrade your ship. But from what I've seen in the press kit and the things that they sent over along with this game, there are other ships that you can get at some point. I haven't gotten there yet, though. They're still letting me test fly this guy for the most part right here. I'm going to take this thing on back to base. And we need to offload some of our goodies, I think, at the mothership. That should be the mothership right there. Well, I don't want to go to, like, okay. I will. This is the mothership, or the fathership, sorry. We live here. Uh, there's a fuel station on board. You can buy repair kits for patching holes in your ship. You can buy fuel here. And in fact, we are probably going to want to buy fuel. Let's grab... Oof, there's so many things to unload. Okay, so I need to unload all of my crafting equipment, all of my booty, and all of my crystals. I need to take out this canister right here, and I need to refill the gas tank. I love the little animation on the gas tank over there. Just looks utterly fantastic. I wish every game had little details like that. And then I got to take it back over here to the fuel pump. And then we got to fill it back up from the fuel pump. And it's going to cost us blue steel. I totally forgot that I have to pay for things in blue steel when I get to the store. You also have gold coins outside of these two currencies. But I haven't figured out what the gold coins are used for yet. But I have like 100 or 200 of them. And haven't really found a use for them. We got mod boxes here. So let's break these open and see what goodies we got. We got a shotgun butt. It looks like we got a rifle barrel. So that's pretty cool. I may actually swap that out for the rifle we just picked up. Seven weapons. Eight weapons. Sorry, I guess I undercounted the amount of weapons that I have. That's not too bad. It's got some precision to it. And we've also got a sight and whatnot for it, so that's good. Every item in this game has a gear score. It will increase your gun's capabilities as its gear score goes up. Brand new rifle butt right there, tier 2. Amulet box. Let's see how I got in the amulet box. We may have actually gotten an interesting ability out of this. The Eagle's Claw. Okay, what does the Eagle's Claw do? The Eagle's Claw. It will increase your damage to Falcons. Simple, sleek, I dig it. Uh, aside from there, we also need to mod this gun over here to have that sight on it. Uh, we can put, ooh, faster rate of fire. I'll take it. Now we got a new rifle barrel. It's going to lower my reload speed, but it gives us more fire range and critical hit chance. So I'm going to go ahead and take it. As you mod your guns, their appearance does change inside these little tooltips to do different things. Uh, we need to knock out some upgrades, I guess. And so I'll probably just throw the red steel at that right there. We also need to come down this way, and I need to figure out what buildings I have or have not repaired yet. So it looks like we've got this building right here, and I do have the wood and stone uh, to upgrade the repair center. It gives you this cool little animation every time you go through. If you're wondering why there's big butterflies or moths everywhere, inside this universe, moths are messengers. They're like pigeons. And so we have that white one behind us that helps us load up gear and whatnot. There are cosmetics if you want to decorate for example, your boat in your own way. You can buy crates and fences and, you know, you can buy couches and bushes and you can get rid of all the stuff they have in here and start decorating the area, making it look nicer. This building right here is the armory. I want to upgrade it to level two so that I can get some more gun upgrades, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. We've also got the factory over here where I can recycle. You no doubt saw me pick up some of that ore. You can recycle the ore right here and it will give you even more of those little red steels that you can play around with. You'll also occasionally come back here and be given quests by the townsfolk. Uh, keep an eye out for them. There are side quests and things that people want you to take care of, but we still need to finish off that other island, don't we? 
the map for this game while you're flying around seems to be quite large. Like, it seems like there's boundaries along the edges of it, but some of this stuff looks like it's going to lead to other places. And you've got, like, Swarm Region down here, which I haven't been to yet. There's still a lot of islands for me to clear out and get upgrades from. Have I talked about... I like this menu right here, too, how you've got, like, a little iPad that comes up. I love it when they sort of, like, in-universe narratively or, like, in-lore contextualize the UI in order to make it feel more immersive. And the game is full of little details like that. Like if you look when I move left and right in my airship, like these little baffles come out in order to direct the ship. Like the gun rotates, the cannons move around, like the little air puffs, or I guess the little dirigibles. They wiggle in the wind, stuff like that. I'm gonna just, yeah, you can just have, okay, well, I guess that didn't work very well. But I was going to say, you can just, like, have one of those. There are lots of secrets in this game. I highly suggest you take a look around and try to figure out exactly... Sometimes there will be little spots like this right here, and you can see how you're supposed to navigate them by going like this. We can grab the mod box right there. Then we can go over to this little ship, go over to here. And there's a puzzle. Uh, there is a little bit of copy pasta that goes on when it comes to the puzzles. So keep that in mind. I've seen this scale puzzle here probably about three or four times now. They use it a lot. I would have liked to have seen, if you're going to use puzzles, at least like come up with unique ones. Uh, but basically the way that you do this is you use this scale over here to figure out what weighs more than everything else. So this guy weighs more than this guy. This guy right here also weighs more than this guy. And then this guy right here. Uh, also weighs way more than that guy. So we know that this one is the lightest. And this guy right here can go right there. We put that in right there. Okay, so this one is heavier than that one. That one is also heavier than that one. So we know that this is the second one. Then we take these two. And we'll see if I got this right. Uh, this one right here is the heaviest. And this one right here is the third heaviest. And then you just got to look at the greater than signs over here. That's pretty much it. So this one's the heaviest. This one's the third. That one's, there we go. And then that one's the lightest. And then we get research crystals. And the research crystals can be used to upgrade these abilities down here or buy new ones. I'll probably buy new ones just because I want to see what the game has on offer. But when you see little choke points like this right here and you can't figure out how to get in there, take a look at it. And sometimes there will be caves in these rock walls that you can walk into and like invisible ceilings will disappear uh, so that you can get to areas that you can see on the map, but you can't quite figure out how to get to otherwise. Lots of unique little exploratory abilities here in this game that I think actually work for me because I've told you guys before, my Skinner Box type is that I'm an explorer. Like, that's what I value most in a game is, like, explorability. Like, how much can I dig into the game world's map and find secrets versus other players who may have still missed those secrets? That's the thing that gives me my jollies when I play a video game. That and my character's appearance changing and getting more sophisticated the further into the game I am. I love the fact that the game doesn't care. They just let you, like, bombard nerds from your ship. Like, if you want to be lazy, you don't even need to disembark. You can just machine gun everyone to death. Oh, it has penetration. Cool. That gun actually hits pretty hard. That's a pretty nasty little piece right there. Oh, it got me. Okay. You're also dead now, though. Was there anything lootable over here? Looks like a bunch of mod boxes. That's fine. I think the mod boxes are probably like my favorite loot. I need dynamite or some kind of explosive to clear the rubble. Will my reload work? My reload will not work. There is dynamite on what looks like the other side, but I don't know how we get after it. In the meantime, we'll send that mod box to the ship. I'm going to break all these open for ammo. Honestly, the favorite, my favorite weapon in the game is the Mac 11, dude. Anytime you give me the ability to shoot a Mac 11 or like a tech in a video game, I can't help it. I'm naturally drawn to tech nines and Mac 11s. They're just such cool guns, man. All right, that guy's dead. Yeah, I don't think my grenade is going to work here in order to get that open. It was wishful thinking. I was hoping that I had the right thing ready to go. But as far as the explosives go, I don't think I have anything that gets me in there just yet. So I think we may have to wait and see. 
I think, oh, that's not a good idea. Okay, so I need to do that right there. There we go. Now I can transition over to the other island. And it looks like we've got another lighthouse over here. What's that big ship up there to the north? Is there anything I should be worried about? Oh, we can't see it with the light tower. Looks like I can jump across over on that left-hand side. And then it looks like the gate's open that goes down into that area down there. And so, you know, it's a, it's a sweet game as long as you're not expecting any surprises. Black Skylands is actually a pretty easy game to peg. Like, impressions, preview videos like this are rarely easy. But this one was easy because what you see on the tin is exactly what you get with Black Skylands. This is a game that ranges from average on the narrative and core gameplay experience side to pretty exceptional on the extra fluff side. And I think this is definitely one of those cases where a game with a simple tried and true core gameplay loop ends up feeling better than the content being pitched simply because the developers took the time to add extra details. So as I said before, this is effectively the Ubisoft formula. You will move around a map. You will investigate points of interest. You will fight mini bosses along the way. You will scout. You will do some puzzles. You will upgrade your HP. You will find pickups that change the way you play the game and change your traversal methods and whatnot. It's not going to blow your socks off with any adaptations to that formula, at least in the first four hours. It hasn't for me. However, the developers did take the time to put an exceptionally enormous amount of detailed work into the pixel art into the game world, into the parallax, into the gun sounds, into the combat noises, into the humor, into the satisfaction and the sound of picking up steel canisters and unpacking mods, and all of those extra little accompaniments, they add up in the background to make this game a pretty satisfying experience that ends up being more than the sum of its parts. Like, this is one of those games where you've seen it before, but this time you're seeing it again and it's done well. Uh, it's an easy recommend, I think, if you're a fan of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you like like that core gameplay loop that core gameplay loop has not gotten boring to you yet and then you wanted to see that kind of AC black flag gameplay married into a hybrid somewhere in between hotline Miami crimson lands and like a top-down Diablo Schluter idea and so I think black skylands is an easy pick all those things right there I've had no crashes I've had no bugs everything works great the UI is well designed and easy to navigate easy recommend uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were taking a look at a title called Black Skylands, uh, which is a open world quasi RPG sky pirate, I guess dirigible punk experience. I don't even know what to call that. They don't really use steam or anything in this game. They all use like those big dirigible bubbles or whatever that they use to get around. And the propulsion method is not really, I guess you use gasoline. So I guess technically it'd be more like diesel punk in the sky. Hard to say. Anyways, there's so many punks out there now. I will catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Thank you for joining me for this brief video just to check up on an old friend that we've been covering since its infancy. Hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay. I'm happy to say that the game has maintained its level of quality. In fact, increased its level of quality over the course of its early access. The gameplay has changed quite a bit since the first time I touched on this one. And I'm happy to say for the better. All of it is improvement. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for hanging out. And that's all I got. Bye, folks.